Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembry. I'm Janice. And this is Quick Study Television. It is a program designed to take you through the Bible. We're doing that. It is a big book and it is interesting. Today we land, of course, in Ezekiel chapter 18 to 20. Ezekiel is an amazing book, and we're going to study it today. Corey's going to help us. Corey, what are you doing today? I'm going to be looking at letters from an ancient Judean fortress. Very good. Very interesting. And you also have some things you put together. I do. Not ancient letters, but ones that are from this year, and they're from you. All right. Very good. Look forward to reading your letters later. Ryan, what's up? Today we're studying a fascinating mystery found in the book of Ezekiel. God asks the prophet to lie on his left and right sides for a total of 430 days. Why? Yeah, that's a really good question. Why would God do that? Also in the teaching segment, who lives and who dies and who decides? We'll find that out and more. Get your Bible and your Bible guide and let's study. Today, you and I are going to be focusing in on some ancient letters that were scratched on potsherds found in what was once a southern Judean fortress. Now, that may sound like a mouthful, but I promise it's not too, too bad. Uh, it's really interesting, and it shows us some of the fulfillment of prophecies of Ezekiel, specifically against the nation of Edom. Arad was a Judean fortified outpost in the desert area of the Negev. It guarded Judah's south and acted as a refueling station for travelers and troops. Arad is mentioned early in the Bible in relation to the Israelite invasion of the Promised Land. It is listed as defeated by Joshua during the conquest. The time period of the Judges saw the city of Arad rebuilt, and it's believed that credit should be given to King Solomon for its impressive fortifications. Arad was occupied until its destruction, like many of the fortified cities of Judah, right before the destruction of Jerusalem by Babylon in the 6th century BC. Today, Arad is famous for its preserved documents called ostraca, letters written in ink on clay potsherds. One series of documents come from what archaeologists have labeled the office of the commander of the fortress. His name was Eliashib, and he lived during the time of kings Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and Zedekiah of Judah, the last kings before the destruction of Jerusalem. This also means that Eliashib was a contemporary of Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Some of Eliashib's personal seals were found at Arad, along with many ostraca that shed light on everyday occurrences at the fortress. Many of them are signed ration orders for troops, showing that Arad was a regular pit stop for troops and possible Mediterranean mercenaries. Another is a puzzling note letting Eliashib know that some mission involving the Jerusalem temple was completed. Still another shows off the Bible's accuracy in condemning the nation of Edom. Edom used the Babylonian invasion to conquer territory for itself in Judah. One of these ostraca urgently commands Eliashib to send troops for protection against Edom. It ends ominously. Get the men to Remet Negev, lest Edom should come. Now, you may have heard it said that the Bible frames out more than it frames in. And what that means is that it's following history, but from a, 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 a more narrow point of view. It's history for a reason. It's history that is important to the main theme of what happened with the Hebrew people over the years. So it can't go into an exhaustive history of the nation of Judah, for example. We know that those exhaustive histories existed, that records of king's reigns that incorporated everything that they did, all of their, all of the legal elements that they did and, and the wars that they fought and the political elements, those records existed, but, and they're even quoted in the Bible, but they are not contained extensively in the Bible because the Bible would be just ginormous <laughs> if it contained all of that information. Uh, so what we see when archaeologists uh, look at sites like Arad is we get to see part of the history that the Bible frames out. So it's not that 
that it was not important history. It just wasn't important enough to make it into the main narrative of scripture. So uh, it's really interesting for me as a historian to look at uh, what archaeologists have found and interpreted at ARAD. And we get to see this fulfillment of destruction on Edom uh, by the prophet Ezekiel, prophesied by Ezekiel and prophesied also uh, by a few other prophets. And we get to see some of the inner political workings of the structure of Judah. The nation of Israel has changed. The first fall came in the 8th century BC. The second occurred in the 6th century BC. Ezekiel was part of the second fall. Now God spoke to the nation of Judah concerning their utter defeat. He had to clarify their failure so they understood what they failed to do and why he allowed this to happen to them. Now, this is often the way we discover our sins and our mistakes. We learn how God works with us so we can stop blaming many of our failures on spiritual warfare. At times it is spiritual warfare. Many times it is not. Sometimes we have instigated it by not following God. And the Lord began to speak to those listening to his word about what is wrong and what is right, who lives and who dies. This is an excellent way to understand right and wrong and what God is saying to those of us who are listening. Ezekiel 18 verses one through 13. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, What do you mean when you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge? As I live, says the Lord God, you shall no longer use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. But if a man is just and does what is lawful and right, if he has not eaten on the mountains, nor lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, nor defiled his neighbor's wife, nor approached a woman during her impurity, if he has not oppressed anyone, but has restored to the debtor his pledge, has robbed no one by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry and covered the naked with clothing, if he has not exacted usury, nor taken any increase, but has withdrawn his hand from iniquity and executed true judgment between man and man, if he has walked in my statutes and kept my judgments faithfully, he is just, he shall surely live, says the Lord God. If he begets a son who is a robber or a shedder of blood, who does any of these things and does none of those duties, but has eaten on the mountains or defiled his neighbor's wife, if he has oppressed the poor and needy, robbed by violence, not restored the pledge, lifted his eyes to the idols or committed abomination, if he has exacted usury or taken increase, shall he then live? He shall not live. If he has done any of these abominations, he shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 1 through 13. We continue through the great book of Ezekiel, an amazing book, one of 66 in the Bible. And this is fascinating today as we look at Ezekiel chapter 18, through 20. 
who lives and who dies. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Remember to get your Bible out and get your Bible guide. We are going to study this and we're going to do it in six minutes. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. And as we do this, we give this time to God and allow him to speak to us and through us. So uh, get your Bible guide out. If you don't have a Bible guide, use one of the three addresses and write to us with a gift in any amount or go to www.biblediscoverytv.com biblediscoverytv.com. Make a donation, any amount. We'll be happy to send you the Bible guide. Now, as we focus on works of faith, it becomes important for us to understand what God is saying. Who lives and who dies? That's the question. Works of faith. God decides that, or do we think he doesn't decide that? Well, that's interesting, isn't it? We read Ezekiel chapter 18 to 20, and we read Ezekiel chapter 18, 1 to 13. This gets interesting. Father, help us as we read this today to understand who you are, what you are about, and how you speak to us. Help us to not allow the things of this world to get into our life and change our understanding of who you are. All right. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 1. Watch this. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying... What do you mean when you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Saying, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, you shall no longer use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul of the, or the, the soul who sins shall die. Now this is interesting because God keeps the soul of everyone. Everyone. We must listen to the Lord and not expect anything from him. A lot of people come to me with, I need to pray, Rod. And they say, okay, what about? And, and they tell me, I want to pray about a, I want a Ferrari and I want this. And I, Hold on a minute. I thought you wanted to pray about some need or something interesting. Well, yeah, I do. I, ha I need a Ferrari and a big TV. Hold on a minute. You see, we come to God with our shopping list. But we need to come to God to listen to the Lord. Listen to the Lord. You know, God is not like Facebook or Twitter. We need to listen to God, hear him. We pray about normal things, but we need to listen to the Lord. Meditate again. We need to learn how to meditate again. Nobody knows how to do that. Very important. Ezekiel chapter 18, 5 through 9 say, But if a man is just and does what is lawful and right, if he has not eaten on the mountains nor lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel nor defiled his neighbor's wife, nor approached a woman during her impurity, if he has not oppressed anyone, but has restored to the debtor his pledge, has robbed no one by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry and converted the naked with clothing, covered the naked with clothing. If he has not, if he has not exacted usury, or taken any increase, but has withdrawn his hand from iniquity and executed true judgment between man and man. If he has walked in my statutes and kept my judgments faithfully, he is just. He shall surely live, says the Lord God. Now, this is really interesting. God decides if man is just. God decides, not man, not the government. God decides if man is just, not man or the law. Jesus Christ enabled us to take him as Lord of our life, to follow his ways, walk in order to be right with God. This is fascinating because I love talking about this. I tell people all the time, the government is not God. Government is not God. And they're like, oh, yeah, I know. I, what, what, what do you mean? The government's not, the government's not God. What, what do you mean? And I tell them, I say, well, God says thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. And people take the law of the land where abortion, there's no laws against it in Canada, and they just do whatever they want. If you're a Christian, if you believe in what the Bible says, understand that the law of God is God's word. 
And we need to understand that because we need to invite Jesus Christ into our life. He helps us to, to realize that. Very important. We go on, Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 10 through 13. If he begets a son who is a robber or a shedder of blood, who does any of these things and does none of the, those duties, but has eaten on the mountains or defiled his neighbor's wife, if he has oppressed the poor and needy, robbed by violence, not restored the pledge, lifted his eyes to the idols, or committed abominations, if he has exacted usury or increase, take an increase, he shall then live, he shall not live. If he has done any of these abominations, he shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. This is very important. God tells us, Man will not live if he does not listen to the Lord, capital L-O-R-D. Jesus Christ told his disciples that if we love him, we will do his commandments and we will live. Now, it's important to know that I speak to people who follow Jesus Christ. That means the 66 books of the Bible we believe. We don't try to modify what Jesus Christ said or did. Jesus Christ believed in the 66 books of the Bible, of course. And it's not that we modify any of that, but we need to understand that we follow Jesus. We don't modify what he says. If you're a Christian, if you're somebody who believes in Jesus Christ, you need to know this. Now, if you're not, we pray for you. That's great. But if you do follow Jesus Christ like I do, then we need to clarify ourselves. And if you're somebody who doesn't follow Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to consider him as Lord, to consider him as somebody we need to come to God and say, Lord, I need Jesus Christ. We need to do that today. Next time on Quick Study Television, we're going to be talking about Ezekiel chapter 21 to 22, and there are no other times like the times that we're in. We'll study that and much more next time on Quick Study Television. Make room for us in your day. Ryan? Well, today in Mysteries of the Bible, it's a really good one. In Ezekiel chapter 4, among other things, God tells the prophet to lie on his right and left sides for a total of 430 days. Now, what is the meaning of this and where does it apply in history? The priest and prophet Ezekiel was one of the most fascinating people in the entire Bible. Indeed, it was this man whom God commanded to act out various skits in order to portray future events. One of these acts is found in Ezekiel chapter 4. In verses 4 through 8, God instructs the prophet to lie on his left and right side for a total of 430 days, one day for each year of God's judgment against his people. While many have pointed out that 70 years of this judgment were already fulfilled during the Babylonian captivity, this still leaves 360 years unaccounted for. A 360 years that does not seem to fit with anything in history. However, it is interesting that in Leviticus chapter 26, God proclaims four times that if his people do not obey him, then he will punish them seven times more for their sins. Multiplying the remaining 360 years by seven yields a result of 2,520 years. Based on the Gregorian calendar with 365 day years, this too seems of little consequence. However, it has been well demonstrated 
that the Bible uses only 360 day years. Based on the biblical reckoning then, the 2,520 years equals 907,200 days. Still, where do we apply these days? Dr. Chuck Misler believes that there are two different periods that are candidates, the servitude of the nation and the desolations of Jerusalem. It is important to understand that there were actually three sieges of Nebuchadnezzar upon Jerusalem, and it was the first siege in 606 BC which began the servitude of the nation. This lasted until the summer of 537 BC. Although we do not know the exact day of Israel's release, if they were released on July 23rd of 537 BC, the 2,520 years would bring us to May 14th, 1948, the very day that Israel was re-established. This is quite an interesting coincidence. When we apply this 907,200 days to the other time period, another interesting coincidence occurs. It was the third siege of Nebuchadnezzar in 587 BC which began the desolations of Jerusalem, and it lasted until 518 BC. If then August 16th, 518 BC was the completion of the walls of Jerusalem, then 2,520 years brings us to the date of June 7, 1967. This was during Israel's Six-Day War, in which their miraculous victory led to the restoration of their old biblical city of Jerusalem. These are extremely interesting results. These are extremely interesting results indeed. A fascinating mystery to say the least. Well, I hope you join me tomorrow because I'm going to actually profile this very strange and interesting priest and prophet of God. Very good. Thank you, Ryan. That is excellent. I like those reports, by the way, and mm -hmm. uh, continue them coming. They're excellent. Uh, he works very hard on that, by the way, uh, putting those reports together. And Matlock works very hard on your reports, which you write and mm -hmm, put together. Mm -hmm. He and edits them for me, yeah, yeah the, the he, video together. <laughs> yeah, and he's doing a great job. But anyway, and uh, soon you're going to have a child. And yes, I look Coming forward to that. I really <laughs> me do. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> me three. <laughs> very good, very good. You have some letters. I do. One of my favorite things ever, and if this card doesn't get you guys excited and you at home, I don't know what will. It's a beautiful thank you card, but hear this. Hello, Christian family. This is from Josephine, by the way. Hello, Josephine. I'm 70 years old and I read through the Bible for the first time last year. Praise God. Thanks to you. Praise awesome. God. Awesome. I will go through the Bible again this year Praise with God. your help and the grace of God. Excellent. Yes. We are so excited for you, Josephine. She says, God bless all of you, and I pray that your program continue for many more years. Thanks again, Josephine. This Excellent. Is what an accomplishment. Why, yes. 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 That's great. 70 years old, and she goes through the That's Bible. That's great. Last year, and for the second time she this year. I am excited about that. Yes, me too. Yay. Excellent, Josephine. <laughs> yay, yay, yay. And there's many more of you out there like that. I just know it. And if you've fallen behind in your reading, please don't get discouraged. Don't sweat it. Just please catch up. Please do not like, stop. You just keep start going. Where we're at. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And then I've got another really pretty card, and this is from Wilma. She's from Ohio. I really enjoy watching all of you on my local station, WTLW. That's Lima, Ohio. I have learned new things from every show. Thank God for you and your family. The teachings are great and truthful, and they follow the Bible exactly, which I follow along with you. Keep up the good work. Well, Wilma, with your prayers and God's grace, we will keep going. And that's a great station in Lima, Ohio. It really is a good one. That one, Dayton, Ohio, these are excellent stations, really good stations. And we so appreciate being able to be aired mm -hmm. on there. Yes. Now... I remember Precious Moments. Mm -hmm. My mom was a collector of Precious Moments. And we have a card here that says, thank you. And it's from Denise and she's from New Mexico. And she writes a lovely card. Dear Janice, Corey, Rod and Ryan, just a small thank you note for all your lives being poured out as a drink offering to the honor of our King. Your steadfast diligence is an encouragement for the body of Christ and me personally. I look forward 
to your inductive teaching and the playful batter of your family as you teach. Thank you for being without wax. <laughs> that is really, interesting. Who really is this? Really lovely choice of words. Mm -hmm. Thank you Denise. so very much, Denise. That is mm -hmm. very much appreciated. Yeah, inductive, inductive teaching. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. That is good. Yeah. That is good. Yeah. Without wax. So we, isn't that, it's <laughs> very, it's lovely. A really yeah. lovely choice mm -hmm. of words. And I, I, I'll tell you, we don't get a chance to read all of, of the letters that you send in, but we do get a chance to read personally mm -hmm. all of the letters that you send in. So we, we do, take such encouragement. You are such a blessing to us and we really do count you as our extended family. We, we do. really do. And that's why we have extra space around the table. You, you so, got one uh, minute. Tell us what you did in Jeremiah. Oh, All <laughs> right. This is our offer for this month. Introduction to Jeremiah. Uh, our hope and prayer for this DVD is that the teaching will uh, set you up to better understand the time period of Jeremiah and to really connect with the information and the prophecies that are recorded there. Uh, so if you would like to get a hold of this teaching DVD, uh, then write to us, call or go online, ask for your copy and it's for a suggested donation of $25. And I want to remind you that Jesus Christ is alive and we want to present the gospel, the good news from the Bible without wax, like mm -hmm. Denise said. And I think that's very important because Jesus Christ tells us that if we invite him who came on the earth 2,000 years ago and who died, allowed himself to, to be killed by us and then rose from the dead. That's amazing. Nobody else did that, but God did that for the cost of sin. And he says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Let me tell you something. If you need rest today, I will tell you, Jesus Christ can give you rest. 41 years ago, I prayed that. And I want to tell you something. The Lord did a number on me. And so it's important for us to understand that if you pray today, if you need Jesus, Pray right now and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.